What's up everybody? So this is the second week in the row that I'm coming to you without combing my hair before I record this video. Last week I had an excuse. So it was Halloween. I recorded the video just before I took the kids out trick-or-treating and I was going as Wreck-It Ralph and accompanying my little Vanellope here and my lovely Taffeta. And so, you know, Wreck-It Ralph, if you know the story of Ralph, um, he's not known for owning a comb or ever noting anything about his hair you know and so i had an excuse uh this week i don't really have an excuse but if you were to see me just at the store or walking around disney or whatever i do um, this is probably how you would see me and sometimes i try and make an effort and i straighten my hair and so i want to know what matters to you uh, you know do you want me to dress up for these if you like me dressed up with my nice hair then go ahead and do a super thanks and if you like me all natural and you don't care so much if i comb my hair then also give a super thanks and then i'll distinguish one super thanks from the other and then make an informed decision moving forward from there you know that's called research methods and so trying to collect some data on that but today i have something super fun that I want to share with you and I've been itching to actually create this video for quite some time and so what we're going to do is we're going to create an awesome timeline page right in canvas using nothing but some simple code but that code's really going to dress up the page and make it look nice and so here we have this page and it's called timeline and uh, before I get started I have all of the code on the page here and you can go ahead and check out the blog over at howtocanvas.com and grab this code, put it into your sandbox course and start tinkering with it. And so you can follow right along with me with this video and I'll show you how to change the color schemes, obviously change the content and really dress it up so that it's your own. But this essentially provides the foundation, the fundamentals of what we're going to be doing today. All right, and so first of all, let's look through the different components that I have on this Canvas page. First, I have this subheading and I call this a subheading because the heading, the H1, is really the title of the page, and that's not something that you can format. You can't change anything about that heading. It's just the text of whatever you call the page, and it's formatted there. And so once we get into the other parts of the page, that's where you can have some fun formatting. And so here I put a heading, so this is an H2, and I styled the H2 with a colorful background. I put some rounded corners. I changed the size and some padding and so we'll look at what components make that up and then I just put a basic description and then I have a couple of different HRs. HRs are the code for horizontal rule and it's used just to compartmentalize different components of a page in this case the canvas page and so here's one HR and it's a, a thick line and then this other one is more of a gradient and that's where I'm distinguishing one timeline event from another timeline event. And again, all boilerplate, and so you'll be able to customize this. So you'll be able to customize this. The color scheme that I went for as I'm creating these, um, I just went with the same color scheme that I created for this banner. And so I really like being consistent or at least having some fun with creating color schemes, either for a course or for a unique canvas page. And so things really come together. And so I use the same color for this that I have on the left here. And this gradient has three different colors. And so I use each of those three different colors at different points of the timeline. And of course you can have more events on your timeline. I have three just to showcase what it might look like. You might have six or you might have a different number. You can put your own image in there. Um, and so then I have a header, a colorful header, and then I have a partition between the left side and the right side. The left side will be in this case, the date and maybe um, a heading and subheading for that date and it's optional you can include those or not and you can determine how much width each of these components require on the screen and then on the right I have an image and then some text and you can be creative with that you can put more than one image if you want you might have more or less text and then I just wanted to put a separation between one event and another and that's where I put that HR with the gradient just so that we know that this section is ending all right, so let's look at these items. First, I have a gradient, and to show what a gradient is, I actually created another video that talks about background effects in Canvas. And so if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you check that out because we explore a lot of different gradient types. And right here, I'm just going to show you two different types of gradients. 
And what's interesting is if I stretch this out, you'll notice the gradient actually changes. If it's a short little gradient, then the colors blend in really quickly. And otherwise, you know, it takes a lot of space between one gradient color and the next. But the basic code, what I did for both of these is I created a div. Let me put some space there. And I have this border around. I'm going to delete that actually. Um, but the div is 200 pixels tall. It's 100% wide. And then I have a background color. So the background I chose to have linear gradient. And I have it going to the right. And I have three different colors. One, two, and three. That first color is going to be on the far left. The last color is going to be on the far right. And that's because I have it going from left to right. I say that it's going to the right. And then I have a middle color in there. And so it balances between the first color and the third color. It'll hit that middle color. And so it'll just have a gradient for all of those. And if you want ideas of where to find gradients, then I like this website. I've been using it a lot the last few weeks called uigradients.com. And here you can see various examples of gradients. And so some of them are very bright and have three colors. And some of them will be dark, maybe like this a little bit more austere. It also has three colors, but then it specifies those colors right there. And you may want something with a little more flair. Here's a Rastafari. That's awesome. I'll tell you. So green, yellow, and red. Pretty simple, but um, yeah, you can take these colors. Um, this one's definitely very classy, I'd say, from blue to red, um, which is, I guess, appropriate in the US that this video is going to be launching on election day. And so uh, go vote for your person and, or not and do what you need to do. Get out there and vote. That's my recommendation. Got to be the patriot. So this next gradient is similar, but it's going to bottom right, which means it starts in the top left corner and it ends in the bottom right corner. And in the top left is a red and the bottom right is a yellow. And then you just get a gradient going from there. If I squeeze this down, it's going to look more like a square. And so you can definitely see that diagonal gradient right there. And when it's really wide and it's not very tall, then it's much more subtle. And so I think that's a pretty good effect going for that subtle thing there. And so let's walk through this page here and I'm going to be looking at the code that's involved here. And oh, one thing I'll mention is that I set up this timeline so that if the screen is big, it will look like this, but then notice what happens when you shrink it down for one, it crams in this number here. So you might want a slightly smaller font. It's up to you. I chose big just to go big. Um, and then when I crouch it down, like when I look at a mobile screen, for example, then each timeline becomes vertical instead of using the width of the page. And so here's the left hand portion and here's the right hand portion. And then I get to the distinction and now I'm at the next part of the timeline. And so I was purposeful in that and that you see this line, the separating line. This is actually two lines, the vertical line right here. It's six pixels wide and one line is three pixels wide. The next line is also three pixels wide. And so there's a line to the right of this component and there's a line to the left of this component. And so when your screen is big, then you can't really distinguish it. But when it shrinks down, then you can see that here's the right side. So I know, and this is right aligned. And so I know, okay, that's one component. And then this on the left side kind of brings it all together. And you can see it for all of the other ones as well. All right, so let's take a look at this and let's go through the code. So starting at the top, we talked about the gradients. I have this page subheading right here and you can see that right here, there's page subheading. And what I did is I put that in an H2 with a class and you can see the rounded corners right there in the corner. That's from a class called border dash round. And then I put a style for the background. I put a linear gradient, just like we were exploring a moment ago and then to the right. And then I have my three colors. And so that's my dark cyan and it goes to a light indigo color with a color in between. I put a little bit of padding, 20 pixels on the top and on the bottom and then 35 pixels from the left, no pixels on the right. And so that gives it a little bit of space so that this word here, page and subheading, these two words have a little bit of space. You can see the 20 pixels on the top and the bottom. You can see the 35 pixels on the left. I didn't need any padding on the right. It's fine. 
and then I made it a size 36 point and you can make that whatever size point you want. Maybe you want it smaller than the header. In that case, you might try 24 point. And since the background is pretty dark, then I put the color of the, um, the text there as white. All right, and so that's how I got my header. And then the next element is just a paragraph. And then I get to an HR. And some people don't realize that, well, for one, you might not realize what an HR is. And that's just these um, angle brackets and the letters HR for horizontal rule. And that'll put a one pixel line that goes the width of the screen. And then you can put content above and below that. And so what I did is I styled it and I have border dash top six pixels. So this is a six pixel thick line. It's a solid line and then it has a color to it. So it's gray, it's not a black line. And then I put margin of 30 pixels from the top and the bottom. And then auto means on the left and right, then it'll just be uniform. I don't actually need the auto. I could just say uh, margin 30 pixels and zero pixels if I wanted. That's how I get my line. Now the next components here, I'm using Bootstrap and I have a dedic um, and I have a blog post and a video dedicated entirely to Bootstrap that you might want to look at. And essentially, um, I start out the Bootstrap with the grid row, the class grid row. And then I have two components, two sections here. One has the date and the subheadings and the other has the real content. And I want that content to take most of the space if I'm on a large monitor. And so I set, I specified if the monitor is at least medium size, I want this first component to be four units, four out of 12. However, if it's small, if it's extra small or small, then I want it to be all 12 units. And so I can see the breakdown. Um, let me expand this. So right about there. So this is the difference between a medium size monitor and a small size monitor. And then of course, an extra so small size monitor would be something like a phone. And so this uses 12 units. So it's the entire width of the page. And you have to look at the bootstrap video to see what I'm talking about when I say 12 units. And then when it gets to medium or large, then it takes up four units, four units out of 12 would be 33%. So I'm saying 33% of the width will be this column. And then 66% of the width would be the other component unless the screen is small. And then both of them would be 12. All right. So let's look at some of the other code. So I have the class defined right there. I have a border on the right, which is three pixels. So when the screen is small like this, I can see that three pixel line right there. It's a solid line and it's the same color as the text right here, the 1985, which also happens to be the same color as what I see up top right there. And then I put in some padding, some margin. I text aligned all of the, this text right here to the right. And then I just put in the text that I wanted. So I have um, an H3, I have an H4 and I have a paragraph and then I close out that diff. So that's that section right there. The next section is pretty much the same thing, except for instead of four units wide, I put it at eight units wide. And then instead of having a border on the right, I put the border on the left. It's the same three pixels. It's solid, same color, same everything. I did put a picture. And so I floated that picture to the left and then I put in my text. Other than that, it's pretty simple. So just copy that and paste it. And then I ended the bootstrap. So this is one bootstrap grid right here. The next line is a separate bootstrap grid and it's separated by an HR. So in this case, I put the HR as a linear gradient and I put 180 degrees. So it goes, you know, from top, from the bottom to, or from the top to the bottom, I have it white and gray. And so that's where you get that gradient. I put the height as 33 pixels, um, no border, no margin, <clears throat> no border, a little bit of margin, just because I wanted to put some space above and below it. And then I have another grid row. And essentially this grid row was copied and pasted. I took that first section and I pasted it two more times to get three. And the only thing I changed in this example is the color of the text right here and the color of those two lines. And then this third one, I put, I changed the color of the text and the color of the lines. And then I put 1999, 2006, the arbitrary number is 1985. Those would be whatever is meaningful for you. All right, so let's look at what else do I have. I think that's about it. Um, the, so again, you'll want to copy and paste. So you'll grab one of these grid rows and that's an entire chunk right there. That's an entire date. Copy and paste that as many times as you want and change out the content. 
and you should be good to go. So I think that the things that you'll want to play with are, you know, when this is small, um, how large do you want the font to be? This 1985, for example, because at some point it does break up. I think I used too large of a font, so maybe tone that down a little bit or not. It just depends on what you want. I think that's kind of a fun look, that 1985, but it's a little confusing also. And so I would probably make that a smaller, more modest font. On the phone, it actually looks pretty good, I think. This would be the equivalent of what it looks like on a phone here. And so, yeah, it's not too bad. And I think this will give you something to play with. So um, again, look at some of my other tutorials for more information on Bootstrap and Gradients. And check out the blog post on howtocanvas.com so you can grab this code. And yeah, really have fun with it. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate you. And until next time. Happy Digi Nanonin!